Learn the tools for effective firm leadership with ACEC's Business of Design Consulting, a six-week virtual course to help you build management expertise to help your firm thrive. Whether you're a CEO looking to mentor your firm's future leaders or an executive wanting to develop your own leadership skills, the Business of Design Consulting is the place to learn. Act soon. The upcoming session begins on April 6th. To learn more and register, visit acec.org. Welcome to the Government Affairs Update from ACEC for Friday, March 5th, 2021. And we're coming to you today with some news related to an issue that we are following closely uh, with our advocacy department, and that continues to be the PPP FAR credits issue. And I am joined today by Steve Hall, uh, our SVP for advocacy, and Matt Reifer, who is uh, really been beating the street as far as it goes with uh, working this issue. Both of them have. And I uh, want to uh, toss it over to Steve for kind of an update on where things stand uh, on this issue and what ACEC is active on. Steve, welcome to the show. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks for having me. Yeah, this continues to be really our number one priority. We've been working on this since it materialized last year, and, and it has really hit overdrive uh, in 2021. Uh, and you, we're making progress. We're making good contacts with lawmakers. We're having good meetings. Um, there is still a hangup over uh, the application of the FAR credits clause to PPP loans and forgiven PPP loans. I mean, that's an important distinction. This doesn't. Uh, this isn't a problem for firms that don't apply for forgiveness. But for the intent of the, the PPP program, which was to provide America's small businesses with forgivable loans, this problem really runs contrary uh, to that intent and uh, and seems to be falling particularly heavily. Uh, on the engineering industry. And what we're hearing from lawmakers is twofold. On the one hand, they're concerned about the question of double dipping. They're concerned about uh, the situation where there is overlap between uh, uh, contract payments they receive from state DOT clients and expenses covered uh, in part by those PPP loans. And that overlap is what's triggering the FAR credits clause and the notion that, uh, that uh, these government contractors have to give a, a portion of the money back. Now, we've argued that uh, the PPP loans are government assistance. This is not some sort of, uh, um, you know, routine expense or routine credit or discount that normally invokes the FAR credits clause. Uh, and what they're getting paid by their DOT clients is for work uh, delivered to those clients. And so th there's a distinction between the two pools. So far, unfortunately, that hasn't been persuasive to lawmakers to completely waive the FAR provision, but they want to help. Uh, they're looking uh, to us for some ideas on uh, ways of uh, either delaying the imposition of this mandate or containing it in such a way that um, firms don't find themselves actually giving back more than what they took in the loan. And, and, and those types of scenarios that we've laid out for them, if firms, for example, are forced to um, apply a credit to their overhead rate uh, that they provide to DOT clients, that could easily take the entire loan, whether the entire loan was, was applicable to those DOT contracts or not, and then some. Uh, it's very easy to see where firms could end up giving back far more than they took in, uh, in that PPP loan. And lawmakers on both sides of the aisle are very, very sensitive to that. That has gotten traction. They want to work with us to figure out solutions to, uh, to prevent that. Uh, so uh, we're working with them. And, and one great development uh, is, um, uh, and again, I think evidence that we've gotten uh, the attention of Congress is the House Small Business Committee is going to hold a hearing on this issue. Uh, based on the the concerns that we have brought to them about this uh, 
this issue. And uh, we've got uh, a couple of ACEC witnesses testifying. And, uh, and I think they'll do a great job in laying out in, in very specific terms what this is going to do to the typical small engineering firm that uh, took a PPP loan. Absolutely. That's, that's probably the biggest news, um, you know, really materializing out of the past couple of days. And that's, you know, next Tuesday uh, at 11 a.m., the House Small Business Committee Subcommittee on Contracting and Infrastructure is going to hold a hearing, and it's called the uh, Interaction Between the Paycheck Protection Program and the, the Federal Acquisition Rules, what it means for government contractors. And we're going to have two hearing, uh, two witnesses, um, Robin Greenleaf, of course, our chair-elect, and then also Carlos Panin, uh, president of Cap Engineering out of Coral Gables, Florida. Matt, uh, you know, how did this come about? You know, what are we looking at accomplishing here? You know, what's the outlook for the subcommittee hearing next week? Yeah, the uh, the House and the Senate Small Business Committees have really been the center of the universe uh, on this issue for us. Uh, it, it's a complicated issue technically, and it crosses a lot of jurisdictional bounds because you're dealing with the federal acquisition regulations, the DOT component, you know, brings in the transportation committees. Um, uh, But because the small business committees were the genesis of the PPP loan program and have taken the lead on, you know, modifications and corrections and technical fixes to that, that's where we spent most of our time and attention. So we've been talking to member offices um, uh, on that committee and the committee staff, both in the House and Senate, Republican and Democrat, and then the other, all the other congressional offices that we meet with tend to go to that committee then uh, and check in, weigh in, and support on our behalf, and ask you know clarifying questions and sort of get a, get a status check. So it's that it's the direct outreach to the committees um, from the national level. But then I also say, so much of the outreach from ACEC member firms and from our MOs at the grass tops level and reaching out to their delegations has generated a lot of this attention as well. They're the ones that are talking to their members, uh, explaining the issue, raising concerns, uh, and then we follow up with meetings uh, on the national side. And all of that activity collectively within the ACEC universe is really sort of driving up the attention and the pressure to do something. Um, and, and that has, uh, as Steve indicated, you know, led to this hearing in the House Committee to explore this and give us an opportunity to make our case and for Robin and Carlos to demonstrate from a small business ownership perspective, this is how you know, it's going to affect my firm. Here's the outlook for me you know, and my small business. And then as industry leaders, you know, in both cases, Carlos within ACC Florida and then Robin nationally, this is how this is affecting affecting our colleagues, you know, across the industry and all of your states and and districts and and why we need to get something done here. Yeah, and I I think this is also a great opportunity for our member firms out there and our, our state organizations because yeah, the hearing, of course, is going to be uh, live streamed, and we encourage everyone to take a look at the hearing when it happens at 11 o'clock next Tuesday. Uh, the live stream link is in the calendar on the committee homepage at smallbusiness.house.gov. But take a look at the membership of that small of that subcommittee uh, and reach out to those members and the members of the full committee as well. Uh, this is a great opportunity to pull their attention to an event that's happening on their calendar. Steve, um, looking at uh, kind of moving ahead on this, uh, you know, we have the one hearing that's coming up. Uh, What else are you looking at doing in the near term uh, related to this issue? Is this just the the, the meetings, the letters, and the the, the usual strategy that that is effective in getting something done? Um, Are there any other things that you're looking at doing? Well, yeah, I mean, ultimately, Jeff, we get we've got to fix the problem, and uh, and so we've got to fine tune what uh, uh, you know. If lawmakers aren't wet, ready to say yes to the the perfect fix, um, then what fix are they willing to say yes to? And so we're finding tuning those options as we speak. I think the uh, the hearing will help, you know, to highlight the issue, draw some attention to the problem facing the industry. And uh, will we think, uh, we hope, uh, motivate lawmakers 
uh, to, to start to take some action, uh, whether it's uh, outreach to uh, the Federal Highway Administration and other federal agencies, uh, as well as uh, some legislative fixes uh, to lock in whatever the fix is that, uh, that we can convince them to, uh, to adopt mm -hmm. uh, to protect our members. And, and if not eliminate this problem, then at least limit its scope as much as possible. Yeah, Jeff, and I'll just add part of our messaging here is the sense of urgency and the sort of the timing is very um, good. And, and in our communications with members of Congress and their staff, look, we tell them, look, firms are coming up on this 10 month deadline at, at the end of their loan period where they have to make a decision about uh, starting repayments or applying for forgiveness. In a lot of uh, situations, we know that the banks are pressuring them to decide whether to apply or not. And so they're doing the, you know, the sort of financial forecasting. They're trying to figure out what's it going to be the hit on my overhead? What's that going to do for my revenue? Um, how bad is this going to be? And, and, and is it worth it or not? And so, and these are, and those have employment then repercussions as well. Mm -hmm. So there's there's very timely and important business decisions that have to be made that are dependent on, you know, the guidance that's coming out from federal highways and DOD and the individual state DOTs. And, and it's, it's, it's problematic. It's very complicated and confusing. Uh, and so that's, we got to explain that to lawmakers too, uh, that there's a sense of urgency to get this resolved so that we can get this settled and then move on. Okay. That, that, that's a really good point. We're in a dynamic environment here. It's, it's something that is, uh, you know, extends from Congress down the main street, the banks, the financial institutions that our firms are dealing with. Uh, deadlines that they need to comply with. So action is urgently needed on this issue. So we need to keep on pushing it forward. We'll keep up the good work on this. I know that you guys are spending pretty much every waking hour uh, on this issue. I'm sure it, it repeats in your dreams at night. So um, keep it up and uh, we will uh, make sure to have you back on to let us know what happens. Hopefully we can get Robin on the program next week, to talk about her experience in front of the subcommittee. And um, we will just uh, keep this on the front burner. It is our main priority issue right now uh, from an advocacy perspective. And we'll just keep it going. So thank you again, Matt and Steve. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. And again, this has been the Government Affairs Update for March 5th, 2021 from the American Council of Engineering Companies. We'll see you next time. Learn the tools for effective firm leadership with ACEC's Business of Design Consulting, a six-week virtual course to help you build management expertise to help your firm thrive. Whether you're a CEO looking to mentor your firm's future leaders or an executive wanting to develop your own leadership skills, the Business of Design Consulting is the place to learn. Act soon. The upcoming session begins on April 6th. To learn more and register, visit acec.org.